This is a video for how to go about creating a hinge in Fusion 360. I want you to note that I'm going to be creating a brand new original design. You might have an existing design you're trying to create a hinge for. You should use this video kind of as a, a little bit of a guide on maybe how to get to where you're going. So I'm going to go up to save and I'm going to call this hinge video and I'm going to say save and you're going to notice now I have hinge video up here at the top as part of like my global assembly and I'm going to be creating different components. So I'm going to right click on hinge video and go to new component and I'm going to call component one a base component and I'm going to say okay. And I'm going to grab a hold of my sketch command and just for the sake of the video I'm not going to mess too much you know with dimensions. I'm not going to get too specific. I'm just mainly trying to show you how to go about creating a hinge because in the class that I teach, we're doing original design. So you're going to be determining a lot of your own dimensions for a lot of the things that you're designing, unless you're designing from a base object like a cupcake or something. So we have, you know, kind of this ring shape here. And I'm going to go to base and I'm going to take a look at my origin. And I have these different planes right here. And the plane that I'm going to sketch on for how I'm going to do the hinge for this is the XY plane. I'm going to right click on XY. I'm going to go to create sketch. I'm going to go to my sketch palette and I want to slice that in half. I'm going to move my sketch palette over. I'm going to hit P for project geometry, and I'm going to click on my geometry, and I'm going to say OK. Now, for this object, I want to draw for myself, you know, a, you know, two lines that, you know, come out from the side, and I'm going to offset this line down just a little bit because I want them to be, you know, work together. I'm going to say OK. You know, I'm going to draw for myself another line down from here. And I'm going to create for myself a circle up here at the top, or about here, about, you know, I don't know, this size and then we're going to create a circle on the inside of it that's going to be kind of the hole that things going to rotate on i'm going to grab the trim command i want to trim out this part trim out these parts here um, notice that it kind of gave me this kind of odd geometry here like it's saying that it was stuck on that so i can always just come in and delete that i'm going to delete that line draw for myself you know a line straight down from here so i can just use the geometry that exists snap over to try to reference that geometry draw another line should be good. So now I'm going to come up to trim. I'm going to trim that off. And we now have for ourselves think something that I can extrude. Just for the sake of, you know, just trying to make sure I do everything right, I'm going to close that off right there. A lot of times when you project geometry, it will automatically see that line. Sometimes I like to draw that line just in case. So look at what we have. I have this thing coming off the side at the top that I can extrude. So I'm going to have this surface and this surface. And I'm going to do a symmetrical extrusion. So if I come up to my house button here, I'm going to flip over and look up here. I can actually drag this out and it'll be totally symmetrical when I drag. And I'm creating myself kind of this little hole for a cylinder to fit through so we can create a hinge. Now, if I look straight down on top of it, you can say, you know, that looks really, really thin and you'd be right. Like it wouldn't hold. You're like, that doesn't even look realistic. And that's fair. So I'd go to project geometry. I'm going to project that. And I'm just going to grab a hold of my two point, you know, rectangle. And I can just go kind of inside the object. And I'm just going to extrude that down towards the bottom. So I'm going to grab a hold of this. I want to go the opposite direction. It's going to say that I'm cutting. I don't want to cut, but I am going to say to the bottom surface. And I'm going to say join. And I'm going to say OK. And you'll see now that I created this little ridge down here. You know, maybe for the sake of discussion, making this look a little bit, you know, more aesthetic, I can kind of, you know, curl in that with a nice little fillet. And I've created my, you know, first piece here. I'm going to reset my view cube just for the sake of the video. You know, I'm going to right click on this corner, set current view as home, fit to view. I want this right here to be my front view, set current view as front. Now when I click home, it'll flip to here. So now I have my base off here to the side. Now I'm going to create for myself a top. So I'm going to come up to the hinge video and we're going to go ahead and just fill that in. I'm going to right click new component and I'm going to for component two, I'm going to call this top. I'm going to say, okay. And the geometry I want to start with is going to be this geometry right here. And I'm going to hit P for project geometry, and I'm going to click on that circle, and I'm going to say OK. Now, I could have created a mid-plane down through the middle, which probably would have made more sense than what I'm doing. But just for the sake of the video, I would just want just this geometry in here because we're going to create a cylinder that slides through here. So I'm going to go to Finish Sketch. I'm going to go to Extrude. I'm going to click inside that object. And for direction, we're going to go to two sides. I'm going to drag this side out, and let's see you know, if we can make this look close to similar as far as how far it comes out from the object. I'm going to go this direction here. We This might not be perfect, but just for the sake of the video, I'm just trying to show you that you can create something that goes two separate directions. And I'm going to go ahead and keep with new body. And I'm going to say, okay. 
And you see now we have a cylinder that kind of runs right down through that object. Next thing we'll do is we're going to go to sketch and we're going to sketch on the end point right here. And I'm going to project geometry again because I want the center point of this circle if I can get it. I'm going to go up to create. I'm going to say, you know, center point rectangle. Let's find the center here. I'm just going to drag out just a size. Finish sketch. You'll see where I'm going here in a second. And I'm just trying to give myself something solid and flat that I can lay this on. So I'm going to say, OK. I'm going to create a sketch here. On that surface right there is where I want to create a sketch. And it's going to flip for me. Let's project our geometry. I'm going to say, OK. I'm going to click on my house. And what I'm trying to do is just trying to create something that would rotate on this hinge. So I'm just going to drag this out. Say, finish sketch. I'm going to extrude this thing up. Just up a distance, doesn't really matter what the distance is for now. Uh, I need to extrude this part two up with it, and I'm just going to go ahead and say OK. We could do a lot of other things. You know, I could extrude this up into here, you know, make this actually fit inside the object, but for the sake of the video, I'm not going to do that. You can see that I now have myself a cylinder that goes through that hinge. I'm going to come back up to our global positioning part, and I'm going to say OK. I want to drag the top part off. So notice that I'm dragging the top. The bottom part's going to stay put. I'm going to drag this part off. I have two separate components, the base and the top. I'm going to right click on the base and I'm going to go to ground. And what that means is this has zero degrees of freedom. It cannot be moved. I can move this around because it's not grounded. This is grounded, so it means it won't move. We are going to do a revolute constraint between this part and this part. I'm going to go to assemble and I'm going to go to joint. I'm going to say capture position. I'm going to go to motion. I'm going to go to revolute constraint. I'm going to go back to position. Where I have component one, you're going to see snap. The first thing it's going to ask me is, what are we snapping to what? I'm going to want this right here to have a revolute constraint with the interior circle over here. And you're going to see that automatically come into play now. There is a hinge. That's an example of a hinge. I can rotate this around. And obviously, you would be right. You're like, this can't physically go through the object. We can set motion limits and do all kinds of things. We'll save that for another time. But look at this object. Pretty cool. That's a hinge. Just like a door hinge. Open up a door and close it. That's an example of a hinge that you can create for your object. I'm just going to say OK. So. We created our own hinge from existing geometry. We kind of created, you know, a nice hole for the cylinder to go into. We created off of that geometry and moved it. Pretty cool things you can do in Fusion from a top-down approach as far as creating a hinge. So this has been a video for how to go about creating a hinge in Fusion 360 um, from scratch, but also from existing geometry, and also on how to use the Revolute constraint within the Assemble toolbar.